All right, emergencies first. If you came to this video because you are currently completely out of fuel and you have a blue oxygen depleted in timer in the upper right corner, then immediately go to your left hand panel, the navigation tab, either write down your location or screenshot this, then immediately log out to the main menu. If you're having any difficulties with this whatsoever, then just skip getting your location, log out to the main menu immediately. You are running out of time. Then open up a web browser, go to fuelrats.com, click the get help button, then click the green click here to get refueled button, type in all the requested information, and then follow the instructions that we give you. We will guide you through the rescue process. Uh, in that initial form where it's asking you for your solar system, if you had to skip that because you needed to get out to the main menu quickly, then just write unknown for your system. With emergencies being handled, I need to turn my systems back on. Hello, I am Seamus Dunahu, Certified Fuel Rat, and this video covers fuel management practices in Elite Dangerous, which is very important because you can run out of fuel, you can become stranded, and you can run out of emergency oxygen, and then your ship will explode. So let's try not to have that happen. If you've been previously rescued by the fuel rats, but you believe you may have forgotten one or more points of the fuel management tips that your rat gave you after rescuing you, then don't worry, you're in the right place. This video will cover all of the information that is covered in the standard debriefing protocol. So, let's get into it. The first most important point then is to understand how much fuel you actually have. And here, the fuel gauge is on the right side of the screen, and I apologize, I can't give you a better view than this of the fuel gauge, uh, given the limitations of the camera suite. Uh, so this indicates how many tons of fuel per hour that your power plant is consuming. The more modules you have turned on, the faster you're going to be burning fuel. Immediately below that, right here, is the reservoir. Every ship has a reservoir, and the size of the reservoir depends only on the type of ship. For a Zorgon Peterson hauler, it's 0.25 tons. For a Lacon Asp Explorer, it's 0.63 tons. For a Falcon de Lacey Anaconda, it's 1.06 tons, for example. Uh, so that only depends on the type of ship. There's nothing you can do to change the size of the reservoir. Uh, below that is your main tank. That's this thick bar right here. And the main tank is the sum of the fuel tank that you have installed in the dedicated core module for that and plus any fuel tanks that you have installed in optional compartment modules. So if you want to have a larger fuel capacity uh, for whatever reason, you can do that. Uh, so all of the capacity of all of those fuel tanks that you have on your ship are represented here on this main gauge. If the reservoir is much, much smaller than the main tank, then the main tank will appear continuous like this. Uh, if the main tank is only a certain number of multiples, like say it's only eight times as big or ten times as big as the reservoir, then you'll see the main fuel gauge be broken up into sections. So each of those dividers represents the size of a reservoir. And whenever the reservoir drains out empty, it will refill from the main tank. Uh, all of your power plant needs will be fed first from the will be fed from the reservoir, uh, with the exception of hyperspace jumps, uh, which drain directly from the main tank. So if you have another solar system selected, then part of that gauge will turn blue, and that will indicate how much fuel will be consumed from the main tank for that hyperspace jump. So knowing how much fuel you have, there are three ways to get more fuel. Uh, you can either dock up at a port and buy more fuel. So to locate the nearest port, you can go to the galaxy map, the Twinkling Stars 
tab the map section and show by color either allegiance or government or economy. Turn off none, turn on the other options, and that will show you the solar systems where you can dock and get fuel. Because any solar system that has a port where you can buy fuel will have an allegiance, it will have a government, even if that government is technically anarchy, and it will have an economy. Right? Uh, th the second way you can get fuel is to install an optional compartment module known as a fuel scoop. With a fuel scoop installed, you can supercruise near main sequence stars uh, to get more fuel. The main sequence stars being uh, K, G, B, F, O, A, and M. Or how the fuel rats memorize it, K, G, B, foam. Now be careful, not all stars that are bright and shiny are actually main sequence stars. So this thing, for example, here is actually a T Tauri star, right? It's not even a star yet, technically. It's a protostar. It's still forming. There's no nuclear fusion going on here. So if I try to supercruise near this thing, the fuel scoop doesn't work. I'm not getting any fuel off of it, right? So to find a star that you can fuel scoop, Again, the galaxy map, and this time, filters, show by color, star class. Turn on the top seven options, and if you want, you can also turn on apply filter to route, so that your ship only ever jumps to fuel scoopable stars. Uh, so I can pick a nearby solar system. Here's a good one. Plot a course, and charge the frameshift drive. Now, in the bubble of human-inhabited space, fuel scoops are very useful because it saves you time having to supercruise over to a port to dock and buy more fuel before you can continue on the journey. And some ship types don't have a whole lot of space for carrying fuel. You might be doing this every two or three jumps, depending on the ship uh, and its fit. So a fuel scoop can save you time in the bubble. Right? The fuel scoop is mandatory out in uninhabited space. So here, I'm just super cruising near the star. I don't even have to be going at any particular speed. I just have to be in super cruise and near enough to the star. Although I do recommend keeping some amount of speed because your ship does start to heat up. And if the ship's temperature goes above 100%, your ship is going to start taking damage, both to the hull and to all of the modules on board. So you may have to pull away from the star, wait for your ship to cool down a little bit, and then dive back in for another pass, until your fuel tank is full up. Right. So that's the second way to get fuel. And the third way to get fuel is that another player comes to you and uses a fuel transfer limpet controller to send fuel to your ship, which is where the Fuel Rats Rescue Service comes in. We have fuel, you don't. Any questions? Uh, finally, I want to co cover a couple of aspects of the galaxy map. So, first of all... So when you plot a route, it's going to be represented with an orange line. Where it's solid, you have enough fuel to go out that far. Uh, and let me actually change the route plotting here. Alright, so where it's a solid orange line, you have enough fuel currently to go out that far. Where it becomes a dashed orange line, you do not, at the moment, have enough fuel to go out that far. Right? There will also be an orange icon indicating the last main sequence star along your route where you can still get fuel with a fuel scoop. Um, so if I tried to travel as far as I could without scooping, I would get this far and then I'd be stuck, most likely. 
it's possible I might have a tiny little bit of fuel left with which I could still jump to a nearby fuel scoopable star if I change my route. But that's about as far as I can go on this plotted route without scooping. Uh, now, if you make sure to fuel scoop whenever possible as you travel along your route, then more and more of the route will become a solid orange line. Finally, if you go to the jump uh, options, uh, down to jump data, by default you have fastest routes selected. So your ship's computer will try to plot a route in as few jumps as possible, and fewer jumps means less travel time, generally speaking. But long jumps are not particularly fuel efficient. Uh, for any single jump, if you double the length of the jump, you quadruple the fuel consumption. If you triple the length of the jump, you multiply the fuel consumption by a factor of nine. Uh, this is in the best case scenario uh, with Sidewinders and Haulers, the ships that use Class II frameshift drives. Bigger sh frameshift drives have a slightly higher exponent. This also works in reverse. If you cut the distance in half, you're cutting the fuel consumption down to one quarter. So there is an option here for economical routes, which will plot your route as many, 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 many small jumps. As small the uh, jumps as the computer can find. You do still have to jump to actual solar systems. You cannot jump into empty space between stars. Uh, between star systems. So on economical route plotting, I have enough fuel, theoretically, to get out this far. Now, granted, this does not take into account the fact that I'm burning fuel all the time while I'm in supercruise. So if I'm dawdling anywhere in supercruise, uh, I'm not actually going to get out this far. Right? Uh, but it does stretch out the fuel supply much further. Uh, so you might be able to get to a port or to a fuel scoopable star uh, with economical whereas you might not be able to with fast route plotting. But it does come at the cost of having to do a lot more jumps. Uh, so with economic route plotting, it's going to take me 148 jumps to get to that destination, whereas if I switch it back to fastest, it'll only take me 34 jumps. Again, assuming that I don't run out of fuel along the way. Now, uh, that covers all of the fuel management techniques as taught by the fuel rats. Uh, if, despite this, you find yourself stranded without fuel, we all make mistakes from time to time, uh, then just go to, first of all, drop out of Super Cruise. Shut off all of your modules, except life support. Just like this. Your fuel usage should drop down to 0.05 or 0.06 tons per hour. Then open up a web browser, go to fuelrats.com, click the get help button, then click the green click here to get refueled button, then type in your commander name, your solar system, uh, select which platform you're playing on, and if you have that blue timer in the upper right that I mentioned at the start of the video, you'll also want to click the checkbox. Uh, you'll then be connected to our internet relay chat server, uh, and you will be given instructions as to what to do next. Thank you for watching, and fly safe.